So I trust everybody can uh, welcome this afternoon to the Marathon County Historical Society uh, to our continuing, uh, this is really a twofold, uh, this is part of our genealogy sessions uh, this afternoon, which we have continually throughout the year, and you'll notice those on our history, uh, history live brochures. We have a variety of genealogy sessions scheduled throughout the year. Uh, but we also have a lot of other programs throughout the year, so uh, please take a look at that, and we will, um, uh, and we invite you back. They're all going to be at 2 o'clock. I know that there was some, some uh, publicity with that one out with regard to 1.30, but everything will now be at 2 o'clock on a, either a Saturday or a Sunday afternoon. And when we scheduled this, we did not know that there would be a Packer game this afternoon, so, so there you go. If we were to schedule for Saturday, most likely our luck that would have been, the Packer game would have been yesterday, but that's the way it is. So, um, so welcome. Well, we're, uh, some of you may have already seen parts of this. I've done uh, a variety of um, programs uh, throughout the last several years on churches, and the ethnic basis of churches in Marathon County. And this is sort of a take off on that. We'll be talking a little bit about that. Uh, the influence, of course, of, of immigrants and foreign born in Marathon County is quite a story. It's a story that's been intriguing me for quite a while. And uh, we started to put this program together and, uh, because the influence of, uh, of immigrants is quite influential especially with regard to uh, some of the uh, churches scattered throughout Marathon County. And we're going to be visiting uh, a lot of those sites as uh, this afternoon. Uh, pretty much what we're going to be talking about will be uh, Marathon County pre-1900. Uh, I want uh, specifically speaking as, about some of the early ethnic um, groups here in Marathon County. But first of all, I want to just speak again to the uh, reason why people came to Marathon County. They came because of the White Pine. This is pretty much the way um, Marathon County looked with, a good with the 250 uh, feet uh, White Pine. You can notice the little lumberjack in the bottom of the picture. Uh, it's quite, this is why people came uh, and they came to uh, make money, they came for a variety of reasons, but this was one of the big reasons. And then you can ask, why Marathon County? Uh, why Wasa? Well, because pretty much the Wisconsin River, the Wisconsin River coming through here uh, enabled a lot of that lumber to be floated down the uh, river to sawmills uh, along a variety of the rivers, uh, including Wasa, Mosinee, and various sites around the county. So we, um, so a couple different reasons why we, uh, why we have this unique history and people came and the immigrants and the workers came in the early days to these, to the Wisconsin Northwoods to harvest that white pine, to make money and to seek a new life uh, from Europe. So then, um, just a little bit of um, what 1885 foreign born looked like. We had a total population in Marathon County of about 27,000. Uh, but at that time, Germany uh, had the major influx. This is foreign born. It's not the number of first born in America. Uh, but this is sort of a sense of what uh, the ethnic, some of the ethnic groups were like here in, in Marathon County. Uh, Germany, of course, 33%, um, one-third of Marathon County at that time was pretty much German, and then the, some of the other uh, immigrants uh, from Scandinavia, Ireland, France, Great Britain, and Bohemia uh, were some of the other larger influences that, that happened. In 1900, things started to change a lot because some things changed between 1885. Uh, one, the total number and the percentage of the Germans uh, in Marathon County fell a lot. There were uh, some other um, 
immigrants uh, started to show up, the, the Norwegians, uh, Ireland, uh, we're starting to see some, um, some influx of, of Polish, not only from Austria, Germany, Russia, and some unknown Sweden, and a little bit of Sweden, and a little bit of Bohemia, but a little bit of a sense of where these ethnic groups are in, uh, in coming to it in numbers in Marathon County. Well, here we are. Um, this is where they were, uh, were coming from, just because a little point of reference. Sorry, Chris. Um, this is the uh, Bohemia southern part uh, coming in from Czechoslovakia. We'll be talking about uh, a little bit about Bohemia, Pomerania, Mecklenburg, uh, low parts of Denmark, uh, and a variety of other, but and, po and Poland, of course, in this area. So this is pretty much the way Europe looked like in, uh, as immigrants were starting to come. This is very, uh, and this is how what Marathon County looked like. Pretty much a rectangle, nothing. Uh, of note, except that the upper left little section up there is gone, so that history um, we don't know about. But here's Marathon County, you look at the Wisconsin River coming down, all divided into the various sections here. Before I go into, I just, um, there were a couple, pe three people here that I really want to make reference to, and not as indicating really of an immigrant group. One is uh, Walter Alexander. Um, as a, a, a Scot coming from Scotland. Uh, he was born in Scotland and uh, evident of, the, of some of the Scottish population as well as his uncle, uh, Walter McAdoo, coming also from Scotland. Uh, not very much of a Scottish element here, but these two, um, especially Walter McAdoo being considered the father of the city of Wausau, uh, were really instrumental in, in the early life of, of Marathon County in Wausau. And then another person who I want to highlight, and I didn't know how to capture, is this is uh, Ben Heidemann uh, coming in the 1880s uh, to Marathon County in Wausau as an element of the, of the Jewish population coming from Germany. Uh, even though they were a small segment of the population, they came to be a very significant part. Uh, the early sub of the early Jewish population coming from Europe came mostly from Germany, and then later on, they would be coming from the Polish parts, uh, Polish parts of uh, Europe and Russia. Uh, but the Jewish uh, immigrants were coming, and they found uh, a variety of livings here, pretty much in the city of Wausau, not too much in the rural areas. Another part, uh, which we don't, um, you'll see little segments here. Uh, Rocky Ridge Road is a little, sec a little stretch of land um, to the west of Mosley. And I just point that out as a little bit of a Bohemian Czech uh, population. Um, I don't have a, uh, the, we know they were there. Um, there's some Czech identifying parts, but this is maybe one of the larger uh, Czech or Bohemian sections of, uh, of Marathon County that was, that was there. Um, but first of all, I want to talk about uh, the Polish people coming to Marathon County. And as part of the history of the Polish, they, um, there's two ways, the um, Poles came to Marathon County in two ways. The biggest way was coming up from Stevens Point in what was called the Polish Heritage Trail, coming up from Polonia in Portage County and then finding there all the way up to the vent. And that is uh, uh, the earth, Polonia in Portage County was perhaps the largest settlement of Polish people in, in North America besides maybe Milwaukee. And I have a Polish expert here in the audience so he can correct me if I'm wrong. But that was a very large segment of Polish people here and the, as the land ran out in, in, um, in Portage County, they drifted north uh, to find their way pretty much up to the vent. 
And, uh, and this, is their, uh, this is a picture of the, uh, some Polish settlements in the green parts, specifically, would be some of the Polish settlements in Marathon County. We'll talk about them a little bit later, but the big part would be the southeastern part of Marathon County, which was pretty much all Polish. Um, so in, um, in Marathon County, we have Poniatowski, we have the town of Castle, and we have Bavent as major settlements of Polish uh, immigrants into Marathon County. And in the uh, <coughs> conjunction with the Polish Heritage Trail, um, the Poles brought a variety of sacred shrines along that trail. This one is in Marathon County, uh, in southeastern Marathon County, a little bit uh, south of Bavent. Uh, but it, it is indicated out there of the Polish heritage that they were bringing with them. And Marathon and Portage counties are the only places in North America that these uh, sacred shrines uh, are evident. And of course, the, the, um, the church that was associated with the Polish uh, people in Marathon County, in that part of Marathon County, was uh, St. Ladislaus Catholic Church here in Bavent. Starting in the 1880s, uh, this church was built around, as with all churches, um, the new church was built in 1900 uh, and some additions to it, but they always, through the years, have always kept their, their Polish heritage and identifying very closely with their, their period of Polish heritage here in, in the event. Um, they were organized in 1886. Um, the present structure was built in 1896. Um, 800 worshipers in 1905, a variety of uh, a very large segment of Polish uh, people here in Marathon County. Then to the um, to the west of Marathon County in Panatuski, Holy Family Catholic Church. Uh, also, um, first off, construction 1879. The brick church was built in 1890. Um, in Panatuski, there was also a German uh, church, um, Holy Trinity Catholic Church, which, which burned to the ground. But this is uh, strong. Uh, evidence here of Polish immigration into Panatowski. And in the town of, this is a bad picture, but this is the only surviving picture that we can find in the town of Castle, uh, Sacred Heart Catholic Church down in the town, out there in the town of Castle. The, um, I have to, to um, the, the towns of Halsey, Rebrock, and Johnson identified in the western part here of Marathon County, because there was these three lawyers out of um, Milwaukee that bought a lot of land uh, in Marathon County, western Marathon County, and they named three sections, uh, three towns really out of them, Mr. Halsey, Reedbrock, and Johnson. Uh, Reedbrock, uh, Frederick Reedbrock, of course, was the, perhaps the largest one. But from here, um, again, with with these three sections and with Athens. This is St. Anthony's Catholic Church in Athens, built in 1880. And uh, Trinity Lutheran in Athens, uh, organized in 1882. And with these three sections, uh, Frederick Rebrock advertised in Milwaukee for Poles and Germans, pretty much, to come up to farm and to work in the sawmills. So that's why in these three, in this section of Marathon County, you're going to have an influx, really, of Germans and Poles. So that's why, for instance, in Athens, which is pretty much the center of, of, these, of this part of uh, Marathon County, you're going to have uh, an early Lutheran, uh, early Lutheran church, an early German Lutheran church, as well as a Catholic church, because these folks were coming up from Milwaukee, um, that's where Frederick Griebrock wanted them to come up from. He was from there, and he wanted this part of Marathon County to be settled. 
again, uh, uh, picture of Marathon County. I mean, we we'll, um, with and with the, uh, let me go back here. Uh, I did. I did miss it. I did miss the spot. Down uh, west of Mozambique, there's some, a little uh, place called Halder. Uh, and then also Kelly, uh, uh, Kelly along the Eau Claire River and Trap River uh, on, on, the, on the Wisconsin River, which were all Irish settlements. Uh, Halder perhaps became the main Irish settlement. We'll talk about that in a, in a couple minutes. But Trap River had a sawmill. John Callan ran a sawmill there, had a lot of Irish immigrants there, and of course Kelly's Mill along the, along the Eau Claire River was heavily uh, populated with Irish, and the nearby um, crossroads of Callan was also a little bit of an Irish settlement. So there were some Irish folks coming in the early days. Uh, most of them settled in, uh, in what we call Halder, uh, uh, pretty much close to 153 west of Mozambique. Uh, eight, uh, the McGuire's were one of the early families there, organized in 1871. Uh, this church was built in 1906. Of course, they, they named the church St. Patrick's, um, organized, um, and then this present edifice uh, built in 1906. Um, and if you come inside, if you have a chance to visit that little uh, uh, church, it's quite quite impressive. And of course, they have a stained glass window of their patron saint, uh, Saint Patrick, there in the main sanctuary of the church. Um, moving along a little bit to the uh, now into Marathon City um, with the. Marathon City is one of the unique stories, perhaps one of the larger stories of, of Marathon County with uh, immigrant, immigrant stories, because it was Marathon City that was the target of some Polish, I'm sorry, some German Catholic parishioners in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, who in the early 1850s decided that they wanted to get out of Pittsburgh. They wanted to seek the freedom of Wisconsin. So in 1850, uh, 1857, they sent some scouts out, bought some land in what we now know as Marathon City, and the following year they came to, to uh, what to farm and to settle Marathon City. And one of the first things they did, uh, as we see and which we'll continue to see, was they built a church. And this is an early picture of St. Mary's Catholic Church in Marathon City. Uh, this uh, uh, stood the test of time for quite a while, but in 1910, 1911, uh, they built this magnificent edifice on 4th, uh, 4th Avenue in Marathon City. Um, again, a tribute to the uh, German Catholic devotion that these folks had to their church uh, and, uh, and they built this this uh, this great edifice. If you haven't been there to see this, uh, take a look. Go into Marathon City and take a look. It's the great church on the hill, and it's one of the great uh, I think churches of Marathon County. And the, and it's really a dedication to um, that German Catholic uh, Pittsburgh uh, immigrant settler status that, that they built this church and uh, it still stands today as a tribute to those early Pittsburgh pioneers uh, who came to settle in Marathon City. Then uh, moving on a little bit north of, Mar of uh, Marathon City into the northwestern part of Marathon uh, in the Stettin area. We, um, and then a lot of people will ask me, what about these Pomeranians, so to speak? Well, uh, uh, that part of Marathon County, uh, pretty much north of uh, Highway 29, a uh, little bit 
the east of Athens, but still a good part of Athens, and then over to the Wisconsin River, and then even up a little bit into Lincoln County, uh, southern parts of Lincoln County. It was a group of what we, uh, German immigrants, German Lutheran immigrants coming from Pomerania. And that is that part of Europe, and that part of old Prussia, that this is the Baltic Sea, and then this would be Prussia, Russia, uh, Germany, Poland, uh, Denmark. Uh, they all came uh, to settle in, in Marathon County. So of course there were some Pomeranians also coming into the city of Wausau, but they really took that, that section of uh, Marathon County uh, pretty much over. And, uh, and thus we have, um, and I just, if you look at Louis Marchetti's history of Marathon County, you'll see a lot of <laughs> references to a lot of German <coughs> Lutheran churches up in this part of, of Marathon County. But I'll make one reference to the, uh, St. Paul's Lutheran Church up in Naugard, a little uh, west um, up in the town of Berlin. Uh, this is St. Paul's Lutheran. Organized in 1861, so it was uh, early early German settlers in this part of Marathon County in the 1850s, pretty much similar to the German Catholics settling around Marathon City. Um, uh, the first settlers came to the town of Berlin. Uh, they were saying in the 1860s. Uh, the first church was built in 1872. This present structure was built in 1904. Again, German Lutherans uh, coming from Pomerania. Uh, Trinity, this is uh, Trinity Lutheran uh, in the town of Satine, also uh, organized around that same time period, uh, formal organized in 1863. Uh, in 1848, uh, this, uh, their church was moved from the east side of, I forgot, I think it's 120th Street, or 120th Avenue. Uh, across the street to the west side of the street. Uh, it was leveled, this church was leveled by fire in 1870 and 1879. A new church was dedicated. But again, um, German, another German Lutheran church um, that you'll find pretty much along the countryside uh, of this part of Marathon County. Uh, I, on the map, I put a little reference out here in the town of Easton to a Forestville Reform Church. I don't have a picture, but there was an early, I make this little reference because there was an early Dutch settlement uh, out on Highway Z that formed the Forestville Reform Church at that time, in the early days. I think that eventually they may have come I have my church history right, I think they're now the New Hope Community Church. But a little Dutch, a little Dutch uh, community um, east of Wassa um, called Forestville, Forestville Reform Church. So uh, now I want to just move a little bit into the city of Wassa. This is the only picture of the city. Um, completely different than what we now know of today, but uh, this is where Settlers would start to come, not too much on the west side, uh, mostly on the east side of the river, working in the sawmills um, and some of the lumber, other types of lumber product uh, manufacturing plants here. And I start with uh, St. Mary's Catholic Church, um, perhaps the first, one of the, let me just say, one of the first uh, churches in Wassa. Um, and in the early days, this first services were held in 1849, but uh, St. Mary's was, in the very early days, the home to Irish and French settlers coming into Wassa. Um, they, uh, but as the Germans, as we noticed, the Germans coming in, uh, St. Mary's uh, became a heavily German congregation uh, for, for many years, uh, continuing for many years throughout their history. But there was that 
in the very early days of French and Irish uh, element here in Lhasa, and they were worshiping at, at St. Mary's on Grand Avenue. That, we'll talk a little bit about that, but St. Mary's was home based pretty much to a large German neighborhood um, across the street from St. Mary's eventually would become the Nazi Bruder Brewery Company, and uh, that was all pretty much that whole neighborhood really of, of Germans into, into Wassa. Then, um, somehow we got cut off. Uh, as the Poles start to come into Marathon, into uh, Marathon County in Wassa, uh, they, the Poles did not want, Polish Catholics did not specifically uh, want to be worshiping in that at St. Mary's uh, German, uh, uh, having the uh, school and everything in German. So they petitioned the bishop and thus St. Michael's Catholic Church was started up on, up on 6th Street. So this is an early picture of St. Michael's. The church, this church was built about 1886. So that you can see that a lot of these churches, uh, 1880s was pretty common. This was the large uh, uh, immigrant invasion really of, of, um, of Marathon County including the Germans and the Poles and a lot of other uh, immigrants uh, coming into Marathon County. And then all the, uh, this is a very early picture of Zion Lutheran Church. Uh, this was over on Seymour Street, very close to St. Mary's uh, Catholic Church in that neighborhood, German uh, neighborhood, uh, starting in 1874. Um, then eventually they, oh, I, I show this picture of Mrs. Wheatman. This is Johanna Wheatman. Because um, I show this in terms of my um, history of women in Marathon County, because it wasn't just all men, all immigrant men coming into Marathon County and stuff. And she was a very influential person in the early history of Zion. Uh, uh, she was the uh, formator of, of, the, of the ladies groups and a very important person in, in the history of Zion uh, in the early days. And uh, I always want to give tribute because I think that we sometimes forget some of the uh, hardworking women that were working in the early days of uh, Marathon County. Eventually Zion would build this church on the corner of Fifth and Scott. Uh, again, the uh, history of Zion is pretty much Pomeranian. Uh, early records show that they were the same Pomeranian Lutherans uh, coming from the northern parts of Germany and something in Wassa. They would, they would be the uh, people working at Curtis and Yale and some of the sawmills, as well as the, some of the other lumber product companies in, in Wassa. And eventually in the 1950s, they built this uh, church on the corner of 6th and Grant Street. Um, uh, on the west side of Wassa, the, uh, the German Lutherans were also starting to uh, move to the west side, very uh, thinly populated, but there were some. And in the early 1900s, they uh, felt that they would, uh, they needed a church of their own. They were tired of sending their children across the rickety bridges to Zion Lutheran. So in the 1907-1908, uh, Zion Lutheran Church uh, donated land on Stewart Avenue to form Trinity, to form Trinity Lutheran Church on, on like I said, on Stewart Avenue. Again, a German Lutheran uh, church uh, heavily referencing the, the German Lutherans living in that part of town. Uh, but I showed this picture of an early picture of St. Paul's. Um, in the early days, it was evangelical reform. And this was really, St. Paul's was pretty close to being the first Protestant church. In fact, it may have been very, uh, may very well have been in the 1850s 
the first Protestant uh, church in the city, uh, made up again of Germans, um, uh, not knowing quite if they would be Calvin or following Calvin or Luther or Luther, uh, but uh, and then through the through the years, uh, the various churches, uh, St. Paul's and now St. Paul's and the Church of Christ, but a strong German, a strong German Protestant tradition uh, with with uh, with St. Paul's. Then uh, in Marathon, in this map of Marathon County, I. Uh, have a, a little block, and I don't have a picture of the church, Bethlehem uh, Lutheran Church, up in the northeastern part of Marathon County, which was all, which was a Norwegian, little Norwegian church, um, and uh, that's where they were selling up in that part of Marathon County as farmers. But then in this in the city, and again this slide got cut off. Uh, they started Emmanuel Baptist Church, uh, Emmanuel Lutheran Church, I stand corrected, Emmanuel Lutheran Church in, in 1884. This was their early church on First Street, and then eventually they built, for a picture, they built this church on the corner of um, 7th Street and Adam Street on the Wassa's east side. Again, uh, a testament to the Norwegians coming in, the Norwegians coming into Marathon County, um, working again in the, uh, in the early days of uh, Wassa and farming up in the northeastern part of uh, Marathon County. Then I want to call, uh, and then come back to this map of uh, Europe and then a little section of West, one of the churches that I'll speak to next is, this is Westphalia part of Germany, and there was a church on the west side that, um, that pretty much uniquely took the immigrants from Westphalia, pretty much came to start what we now know as Grace United Church of Christ on 3rd Avenue, um, um, and they were, they were the uh, immigrants German immigrants from Australia that came to uh, start Grace United Church of Christ here on Third Avenue, and uh, and that is um, my little history of of immigration uh, into into Marathon County, with some of the ethnic groups and some of the locating where they were throughout Marathon County. And I thought I would. First, if you have questions or comments with regard to um, how, did they get here? how did they get here? job, work, getting getting out of the military in Europe, that type of thing. How they got here from New York or from parts east would be uh, the train came to Wausau in 1873, and that, uh, so that brought up here after that, before that it was maybe the Wisconsin River, uh, walking, a variety of other things like that. But, They could have taken the Great Lakes, and they have a variety of different ways. How about the people who came here from Pittsburgh? What were they doing in Pittsburgh? Had they, they were working in the mills of Pittsburgh. They were working in the steel mills of Pittsburgh. And they decided that they wanted to farm and breathe free.
environment, those kinds of things. And it was Europe, there were a lot of spots in Europe that people were really hungry, so that's why they were seeking out. Well, the potato famine wasn't limited just to um, no, Ireland. Ireland. It was all over Europe. Yeah. But there were just so many different reasons. Military, you know, escape into the military. They just wanted, they needed a job that, you know, was pretty, pretty bleak. If you see some films of um, life in Europe, some of the, especially some of the Scandinavian writers have tried to duplicate some of that life, the way life was in Scandinavia. It was pretty bleak. And, uh, and they, people just said, we have to go to America. We have to go to America to get, to get a job and to make life better for us. And that's what brought them here. Plus the fact that Wisconsin actively recruited settlers. Um, that would have been the later 1800s, right? Eighteen, 1890s, I think. But we actually, Wisconsin <coughs> actually advertised <coughs> and in Europe to settlers. It was, you know. The French people who came here. Finding that the French and some of the Irish were coming from Canada, and that was the the connecting link. They were coming down from Canada. Both the Irish and the French were, were and then coming here, most likely to work in the sawmills and, uh, like I said before, take part in the lumber industry here. But they, I think, the route was pretty much to Canada, because some of the censuses are saying that. They were there long enough for the Canadian census, but then eventually they found their way here uh, through uh, Port Huron and Michigan and that kind of variety of ways. My dad talked about kind of our just an out came from Germany. He lived in Sakeen for a while, and for like a year or two, and then he sent for his parents and they came over here and then he moved out to Great Falls. Right. So, you know, all different things. I had another relative that, like you say, friends he Well, I think everything affected the, you know, the banks and the, and the flow of money. I, but did people even really put their money in banks, or did they just well, put it away? <laughs> banks were pretty early into Wausau and Marathon County. They were. Right. But did people really trust that? Because I, I think years ago they were they just kept their money in the books. And I think banks and banks in the early days were pretty much used for business transactions. Yeah, yeah. But people didn't have much money. You know, they, you know, if they made it through the year, for instance, on the farm, if they made it through the year when the, the, the products that they managed to save from the summer before, they, you know. And they borrowed money, you know, they had to mortgage the whole damn farm. You know, they, you know, some farms just had one or two horses, maybe one or two cows. It was pretty bleak, you know, for a long time on the, on the Joseph desserts said, go up there and start cutting down the lumber, cutting down the trees, and I'll take them for, you know, and 
that's how it all started. Did they have to cut down no. trees to get the agricultural land, or was it some right. agricultural land first? They pretty much had to clear cut the they land. They had to clear cut the and land. Get, and get take down. those dumps out. Yep. I mean, as big as those trees were, how in the name of heaven did they? Big size. That's what my dad said. Down there, dug them, they put coals in them, head court nails, put a pipe through, turn them up, and stuff coals and make it not a burn. St. Mary's in Marathon City, St. Stephen's in Wassa, and Church of the Resurrection in Wassa were all designed by one Anton Dolman of Milwaukee. He came here in that 1910-1911 era, designed pretty much those three churches, and uh, uh, but that was they're all by <coughs> Anton Dolman or the Milwaukee German architect. A German immigrant himself settled in Milwaukee, and evidently the churches were evidently talking to each other back then, and they decided, well, you know, I think Marathon City was first, and then St. Stephen's, and then St. Uh, what was then St. James? Yeah, I think it's awfully appropriate that you chose to put the churches together with the immigrants, because that was absolutely one of the Well, I think there's a strong, top, I don't know if it's, it's, it's like that throughout Wisconsin, but somehow the tie, the curious tie between ethnic churches and ethnic groups uh, is so evident that I find that that story quite, quite remarkable, and I think that's one of the unique stories about Marathon. Well, but, right, because the question was, you know, if you came from Germ uh, Polish, Germany, Polish, Russia, Polish, uh, what was the third Russia, one? Austria. Yeah. You know, I think that the lines of Poland were constantly changing. Oh, that way, okay. And, and they, on some, sens on some censuses, it was Polish, Germany, and other times. Okay. So it was kind of a loose thing, and that's why the census really had to, the census, the federal census, in fact, pretty much broke that down that way. Right, well, in Hamburg, there is a city which more or less exists in Hamburg. Right. And it's just kind of other questions? Well, thank you very much for coming this afternoon and uh, hope you enjoy the day. Thank you.